You'll never see a professional landscape photographer taking those landscape shots without a tripod, and neither should you. Hello, I'm Paul Fontanelli, and this is PhotographyTV.com. During today's episode, we're gonna talk about the importance of having a tripod for landscape shots, because if you're not using a tripod, you're missing opportunities. Those opportunities you're missing are likely a result of being able to do longer exposures. And if you're not familiar with what longer exposures is or just the ability to adjust shutter speed, take a look at this video that I've done before that explains shutter speed because we're gonna talk a lot about longer exposures and the reason that you want a tripod for some of these landscape shots. We're gonna break it down into three different scenarios that a tripod could really be beneficial for you. The first, are low light situations or sunset type of scenarios. Another one is when you wanna bring some effect into water flow and long exposures benefit to being able to do that. And then third, we'll talk about high dynamic range or HDR and why that can be beneficial for landscape shots as well. So let's go ahead and get started by talking about low light situations. And so the best time to take landscape shots in a lot of cases is during sunsets or sunrises if you get up early, and that's lower light. So your camera needs a longer exposure, or slower shutter speed to get the right amount of light. And so the reason that a tripod is needed is that if you have a slower shutter speed and you're holding your camera, you run the risk of getting camera shake, which means if the shutter is open for a long period of time and your hands move at all, it's gonna blur the image. So having a tripod really keeps that steady for those longer exposures. That's absolutely key for why a tripod is needed. Here's a few examples of where sunsets created a slower shutter speed. So here's one at Yosemite National Park. This is a famous shot called Tunnel View. And I took this at about 1 15th of a second shutter speed. Another one here is a night shot. Now clearly this is a low light situation uh, where I was able to illuminate the tent, a little bit of the sunset in the background. It wasn't the best light that day. I think the focus point of this was the tent and the night shot. And this was 13 seconds for an exposure. So clearly a tripod was needed for that. Now in this third example, I was actually using a smaller tripod because sometimes it's just not feasible to bring around a big tripod. This is a Joby Gorillapod and it's really small, easy to carry around. And you can see I was at a lake and it was sunset and I was just using this Joby Gorillapod to get a great sunset shot of the lake. And this was done with a six second exposure. Now, if you also look at this shot, the water is silky smooth because of that six second exposure, which is the second reason I wanna talk about why a tripod can be really beneficial for landscape shots is the effect that it can have on water. So you saw in that last shot, that silky smooth water due to a six second exposure. Here's another one at the beach. This is at Olympic National Park, and this is called Rialto Beach. And see that the water has this mystic look to it. Um, you can see I had the tripod out there, and this was done with an eight second exposure to have the beaches and the waves just turn into this mystic water, which really created this cool and unique look. Also at Olympic Park, another location called Solduck Falls, the benefit of a longer exposure for waterfalls is it creates that sense of movement in waterfalls. So this particular exposure was done with 3.2 seconds on the, on the shutter speed. And again, the tripod is needed because there's no way you could hold the camera steady enough for three seconds. But by having this longer exposure, you can see you get this really cool effect on the waterfall. And here's one other waterfall shot, again at Olympic National Park. This was Merrimere Falls, and this was done with a 20 second exposure. That waterfall wasn't flowing as fast, so to get that look, that water flow look, I needed a longer exposure. And again, you see I was using the tripod there, absolutely critical for that shot. So we've talked about the low light situation for sunsets, uh, the benefit of longer exposures on water movement. Let's talk about a third example, which is known as the high dynamic range or HDR effect. And the reason that HDR can be important and why a tripod can help you is that if you think about what your eye is able to see when you're out at landscapes, the dynamic range is basically the difference in the bright lights and the dark lights in a scene. 
And if you just take a, take a look at this one picture, you can see, I can see all the, the ground in front, the trees in front, but the camera is unable to have the sky dark enough to really bring out the benefit of the sky. And that's just the dynamic range of the camera is not as strong as our eyes are. If you flip it and darken the shot, look at the sky looks fantastic, but now I really can't see anything in the foreground. So there's these two different shots. I want elements of both of them. I want the lighter foreground and I want the, the really good looking sky and the darker shot. HDR actually gives you the ability to bring them together. And the reason that a tripod is beneficial is you may need a little bit longer exposure to get the, the dark or the light opportunities, but really it also makes sure your shot is steady. So when you take multiple images and you blend them together, I recommend using Lightroom to blend them together, you're gonna get the final shot. And so here's just a quick example of those dynamic range shots. I used five different exposures, brought them together and got this final shot where now you have the great sky in the background and also the, the right amount of light in the foreground and that's done through HDR. Here's one other example that I thought really stood out using HDR, again, back at Rialto Beach, um, just using the dynamic range to get the shadows to lighten up on this driftwood, but also look at the sky in the background and just the, the great scene that that adds to the picture uh, by using HDR and really getting the lighting uh, the way that we see it with our eyes. When a camera can't do that with necessarily one shot, you blend a few different shots together with HDR and a tripod is a great tool to help you to be able to do that. So we talked about those three examples of why a tripod can be beneficial for landscape shots. I'm going to give you one last tip and that's a gear tip, which is not only do you want to have a tripod, but if you are doing longer exposures, I highly recommend having a remote shutter release. And these are usually relatively inexpensive to buy. And what it does is it plugs right into the camera so that when you have it plugged in, you push the button to set the shutter off so that you're not touching the camera. Because even if you push this button on the camera on a tripod, you run the risk of shaking the tripod even a little bit will blur that shot. So use a remote shutter release, have it plugged into the camera, don't be touching the camera in any way, hit the button, it'll turn the shutter on and start that long exposure and you'll get that sharp image that you're ultimately looking for. So now that you've watched this video, here's a few other videos that are very closely related to what we just talked about. So hopefully you take a look at any one of these additional videos to see more in-depth details behind some of the shots that you saw in today's videos. Now even if I had a 24 millimeter lens, oh yeah, yeah, because as I talked about in that shutter speed example, if, the, uh, too long, too long, Paul. Uh, without having significant motion blur, Oh, yeah, yeah.